Hey there folks, my name is Peter and welcome back to the channel. On today's video, we are gonna try an internet sensation and build some shelving for these bins. So we'll have two racks, five bins each. I'm thinking there's gonna be about two and a half inches between each bin, uh, which I think will give us enough room to be able to pull them out. Uh, and of course, this is the design that you've seen all over the internet. We will frame what is effectively two walls, right? The same way you're framing a wall with, we'll have a top plate, we'll have a bottom plate, we'll have some studs on either side, and then uh, we'll just have one right in the center. So that'll give us two columns. So what I'm planning to do is make all of the cuts with my miter saw up here in the garage. And then once I have all the pieces cut, I'm gonna lay everything out uh, on the floor beside me. Uh, and then by the time we get downstairs, all that we'll have to do is fasten everything together. So stick around, I think we're gonna have a lot of fun on this project. Hopefully it'll give you some ideas for how you can improve the storage in your home as well. Uh, if you're into DIY projects, EDC tools, uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button. It of course really helps out the channel. We're inching ever so close to a thousand subscribers, our first real milestone. Uh, and I'm greatly appreciative of all of you who, uh, who tune in. So let's get to cutting. As a quick aside, this Milwaukee tape measure is super cool. It's got the auto lock function. Um, so like, as you pull it out, it just sort of stays there without you having to hold this button down the whole time. I really like it. Maybe you should check it out. So like I said, we're looking for six feet here. We will use our speed square to mark this line. Now, never in my life have I made a bunch of repeated cuts perfectly, but today's gonna be the day. That was a lie. All right, so I've jerry-rigged a stop block over here with some bins, holding it up with a two by four and two one by fours. Uh, you know, a miter station would be nice, but this is what I've got for now. Well, the first cut was a success, so now we just gotta make a bunch more. All right, so the math wasn't totally mathing for me. I had to go back, back on the iPad calculator and just make sure I have this all figured out. So, your totes, at least my totes, these are 27 gallon from Home Depot, 15 inches tall. Then, the distance from here to the actual top, I'm gonna call two inches because it has the little ridges on the top. We'll call it two inches. What that means is that you have to take 15 inches plus however much space you want in between each tote and then use that as the basis for where our support braces go. So on this board, I'm just gonna mark it and then I'll mark all of the other boards from here. So to start, I'm gonna come up a half inch from the bottom so that I have a little bit of room underneath the bottom most tote. From there, so we started a half inch. We come up 15 inches, so we're at 15 and a half. Then we're gonna subtract the two inches for this uh, piece here, okay? And that is where we're gonna mark for the top of this, right? Then, to get back on our number line, we're gonna add the two inches back. So now we're back to 15 and a half. Then we have to add how much space we want in between. Now, I originally thought I was gonna have 10 totes in total, five in each column. I don't know why I thought I had room for that. Uh, I only have room for four. So, we're gonna have a fair bit of space here at the top. So I'm gonna give, I'm gonna have a three inch affordance between each tote. So if we start at a half inch, we come up to 15 and a half, we subtract two, 13 and a half is where the top of this brace is gonna go. Then we add the two inches back, 15 and a half. Then we add three inches to that to give us our, our cushion, 18 and a half. And then we just repeat the process. Plus 15, minus two, make a mark plus two, plus three, plus 15, minus two, make a mark. I don't know how complicated that is. To be clear, there's people that have plans for this stuff online. Um, I didn't want to try and use plans because I am a glutton for punishment and part of this channel and these projects is really just learning and having some fun. Um, my goal is not to be hyper efficient with any of this. Um, it's a Saturday, it's gonna start snowing here in a little bit, so it's just something for me to do. But if you're looking for exact measurements, there exist plans online, and I would encourage you to follow those. So there's a half inch. If 
from the half inch, up 15, 16 and a half, minus two, 14 and a half. 14 and a half plus two gets us back to 16 and a half. 16 and a half plus three gets us to 19 and a half. 19 and a half plus 15 gets us to 34 and a half. 34 and a half minus two gets us to 32 and a half. All right, so we got our first wall up into place. Uh, again, this is not a wall, uh, but it's the same principle that you follow. Top plate, bottom plate, stud. Uh, and of course, the mistake I made here is that even though I marked these lines, I didn't line up the boards. So like this one is in the right direction, right? This is the top, right? This is where the bottom or uh, the top of the bracket will go. You notice there's no line here because this one's flipped, but that's okay. I caught myself, so now when I do um, the next wall, um, I'll make sure that they're all oriented correctly, and then uh, we'll just sort of use that as our guide. Uh, we can, and we know we can trust this one, but the rest of these marks are off. All right, so after the first day of the project, I realized I had measured completely wrong. My top and bottom plates were way too short. So when I got the first box in there at the end of day one, it was really way too tight. It was pinching from the sides and you couldn't slide the boxes in very easily. So now this is the next day. And originally I had recorded myself sort of walking through what happened. But as is par for the course on this project, my microphone was off. <laughs> so now I'm recording this voiceover as I make the video, trying to explain what happened. Now, the measurements exactly are sort of escaping me, but I think I had cut them to uh, just under 50 inches, right? And that was uh, too tight. I think it was around 43-ish. That was too tight. I played with it on the first night, and I was like, let me see if I can hack this together. So I'm moving the studs a half inch here, a half inch there. It didn't work. So finally, I came back upstairs, and I'm like, I'm going to cut new pieces, just do this the right way. Somehow, I don't know if I was tired or what, but the new pieces were even shorter than the originals. So I said, you know what, I, I need to go to bed. I, I need to just think about this and then I'll come back in the morning. Unfortunately, I didn't have any new eight footers with which to use. Uh, and it was snowing, so I wasn't gonna drive to Home Depot uh, just to buy some new, some additional studs. So instead, because this is not a wall, right? We're not, uh, we're not overly concerned with the uh, structural integrity in terms of like, it's not like there's a floor joist that's gonna be uh, on top of this. So I said, you know what? We're gonna drill some pocket holes. We're gonna add some wood glue. And we're gonna make the right size board using the materials that we have available. So that's what you see here. I, uh, I took the, the, uh, the shorter of the two boards, I cut, I think a six and a quarter inch piece. I adhered that to the longer of the two pieces, which again was around 43, uh, to make a 50 inch top plate, 50 inch bottom plate. And then from here, uh, the rest of the project will sort of proceed as, as you'd expect. Although there is an Easter egg at the end, uh, and you'll have to let me know in the comments if you could figure out what it is, uh, because I even made a slight mistake with these boards. But now we're back downstairs, uh, and I just decided to pre-drill all of the screws, which I think really helped. This was a really cramped space. Uh, there was a few different areas in which I couldn't stand up completely because we've got you know, HVAC and and posts running. Um, so it definitely makes the room pretty short. I'm basically hunched over the whole day. Uh, maybe that's why I couldn't do math. I don't really know. But, uh, and then the other thing is that I found this 90 degree uh, corner jig in my toolbox that I forgot that I had. Um, and the first thing I did when this project ended is I ordered uh, four more of these, uh, different brand. The, the one I have, I think, is from my grandfather, so it's pretty old, but um, I got some new ones because what a difference that makes to be able to ensure you, you, you have a 90 degree corner uh, without having to use the speed square, uh, especially on a floor that's not level uh, because it's, uh, there is a drain on this floor, so it's all sort of pitched uh, towards that. This went together pretty nicely. Um, and when we get the audio back, finally, is when the, uh, 
the first uh, tote goes into the uh, into the storage rack successfully, which I can't tell you how how exciting that was um, because it took so long to get here. Uh, and I guess that's what they say, right? It's the uh, it's the process. It's not the destination. Um, and like here is where a, g a good example of where some clamps would have been helpful, right? I could have just clamped the board and it made it my life a little bit easier. But uh, again, the whole point here is just that we're learning, we're having fun, um, and hopefully you all enjoy watching me screw this stuff up endlessly. All right, folks, the project is mercil mercilessly complete. It took me way longer than I care to admit, but I'm very happy with the final outcome. My battery's about to die, and I only have one because I usually don't make videos this long. So if you stuck it out to the end, thank you so much. Be sure to hit a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next video.